done. Excellent. Images, yay. Okay, shall I talk through these? Cool. Yes, <clears throat> okay, well, thank you everyone for your amazing input today. It's been really fun. And I feel like we got some really good images. So I'll just kind of show you whistle stop tour what we've been working on. So this first idea is about data repositories. And we were kind of talking about the data as being this kind of ever expanding thing, which is how the tree metaphor came about. And then uh, we um, wanted to kind of show the different levels of access and kind of enabling different levels of access for different kinds of data. So we were looking at different kinds of like data tree and also these little squirrels kind of getting in and out of the tree to get the data. Um, so yeah, so this is a kind of a naturalistic one. Um, incidentally, all of these will have like color and will be finalized. I've got a bit of time on Tuesday when I'm going to be doing that. Um, but are I you sharing on. any screens? Because I can't see yeah. anything. Oh, I did not share the screen. That's why. It's... Okay, there we go. Um, share screen. There it is. Can you see it now? Yes. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so this is the the data tree with the squirrels who are kind of representing people getting access to different kinds of data and different data sets. Um, so that's the first one. I'm sorry that you couldn't see it right away. Um, that's amazing. So next, I'll just, uh, well, you need to see the sketch on the bottom to sort of see the rest of it. But this one is a little bit more technical, um, kind of about the process of getting a writer to um, kind of get feedback on writing uh, documents and having those documents be kind of like tagged and being able to follow them. Um, this is the really basic explanation of something that's more complicated, but um, yeah, so just showing like different stages of this process. Um, and then this one was kind of about the idea of embedding ethics into learning um, across all stages. So the idea is kind of, you've got this little signpost for ethics and then it's sort of embedding itself into the soil. And then that kind of teaching process is producing these ideas that have ethics kind of in their DNA. <clears throat> um, and then, so this one is kind of about taking the sometimes clinical world of data and making it more accessible through using different mediums of art to kind of engage people. So you've got these people taking the data and kind of uh, molding it into this creativity landscape that is more kind of open and explorable by just everyday people. Um, next one. So this one is about uh, a development guide. So we kind of wanted to show like that at the beginning of the guide, it's kind of more set up for people who are at the beginner stages of learning how to use code. And I think it's about using code. Um, but yeah, but the guide gets more advanced as it goes on. So you kind of go from these quite simple building blocks into building like huge communal cities out of code. Um, so that's another environmental one. Um, this one is kind of about changing the current hierarchical system and uh, focusing on making it more um, democratized in terms of who makes decisions and who gives feedback and who is in control of like the locations of where things happen. Um, and this one, so I'll actually show you the really super rough sketch version because it's a bit more easy to see. So uh, in this one, you've got all these different pathways to accessible learning. 
and the teachers and educators are all the uh, figures in like pale orange yellow color and then the people learning are in blue so it's kind of showing the um the pathways that educators go on and, and there are some barriers to the access that will be shown by like little bumps in the road and like the lady on the top left is having like thoughts about someone discouraging her from getting involved in STEM fields. So the whole idea is around kind of making accessible learning more, well, making learning more accessible to like all different types of people and um, kind of collaborative learning. Um, and this one, this is kind of about uh, the process of getting um, getting people involved in organizations and then the positive effects for both the organization and the person who's doing the, I think it's like an internship, volunteering, um, getting experience within the organization. And then they go out to their networks and kind of communicate to their networks what the good things about the organization are. So it's kind of this symbiotic relationship between them. Um, and there's another version of this that is uh, more specific to the um, the actual scholars involved. So you've got the Turing Rush partnership on the left, and then um, the scholars with all the different projects, and then it's them kind of going through the process of learning and getting to travel and having this kind of camaraderie amongst each other, and then going out and feeding that positive experience out to their networks. Um, and then this one, this one actually you had a chance to kind of finalize a little bit more. So this one is about missing data and data that would normally not be in data sets because you can't find it, or it's kind of about taking the gaps and identifying why there's a gap and what that means so that the missing data becomes useful data um, and sorting it into different types of um, missing data, which is what the random, not random, like data bins are for. Um, and then uh, it kind of all fits together into this puzzle that tells the whole story using the missing data. Um, this one, this is uh, kind of showing um, different um, ways of using open source data. Um, so you've got different people like home users and construction um, people DJing using open source coded electronic music. I might just be making things up now. Um, but they're kind of feeding in and out of the open source data pool in this kind of collaborative way. Um, and the data is kind of made up of letters and numbers. So it's like human readable. Um, and, ooh, I, I really like this one. <laughs> um, this is uh, about linting, which is like cleaning up code, like getting all the little bits of random fluff and like little mistakes and things. So you like do the linting process and it makes your code all uniform and consistent with other people's code so that you can fit it all together and people's collaborative code works together because it's everyone's had a chance to like lint roll their individual code so that everything's uniform and uh, consistent. Um, and this one haven't done yet, but we're going to come back to it. This is Malvika's image. And this was the last one that is still in progress, but this is about moving away from kind of the more rigid hierarchical way of doing things into a more collaborative structure with uh, more of an emphasis on feedback and kind of taking cues from people's feedback rather than making decisions and hoping people will like it, but more kind of building people's input into the process of building. So you've got this road that's moving away from this kind of pyramid that's being demolished. 
and then the road kind of goes around in all these different pathways and it's being constructed by people who are working together and like listening to the community and then it's kind of got this feedback loop that's like this eternal kind of being open to feedback and letting that uh information inform what you're doing um and i think that's all of the ones that we've done today so those are going to be polished and finished and colored and made beautiful um and if anyone has sort of missed anything or has in the middle of the night a sudden epiphany about something that should be included um i'll be working on this on tuesday afternoon as well so feel free to kind of uh let me know if there's any missing pieces or anything and i can i can include those but this has been uh really fun today so thank you for having me oh those all look amazing <laughs> thank amazing. you so much um i'm just gonna stop the recording there